Okay, one of the basic things of SQL Prompt is just autofill. So when I do select star from sales.customers, you know, that autofills for me and it's pretty nice. If I alias it, you know, C dot, and I get a list real quick and I can just, you know, use it automatically. So I like that. Um, in addition, it, it will also do it based on, watch this, I'll change databases really quickly. And then I'll say it's sales.customer. And then if it's C dot, I can do like CID. Oh, where is it? Oh, I didn't have the alias. Hang on. C, C dot CID. It's very similar to in Visual Studio when you're doing it by initials, right? You're doing like that, that autocomplete by initials. You can do the same thing using SQL Prompt with SQL Server. So you don't have to know how the thing starts. You can just say, look, I know it has name in the title, or I know it has address in the title, and it will kind of look and find it for you. So the autocomplete can be pretty powerful and pretty intuitive, too. You don't, you know how long, you know, how often you, ha you forget the name of an object. You can kind of play around with it and get the right name that you're looking for. Okay. Let's look um, here. Let's look into a store procedure here. Let's see if we could find a good store procedure like this one. Okay, so the store procedure looks pretty good here. But what happens if this business entity ID, they've actually changed the name. So now I'm in a store procedure. I have a variable. I want to change the name of that variable. I can right click and I can say, Please rename alias variable, and I can and look it highlights it for me in my code. See, it's referenced twice, and if I start typing, it automatically edited it in the two places it was referenced in my code. So, this kind of refactoring ability that we've had using F2 in in um, Visual Studio, we now have using SSMS and SQL Prompt. Um, and that's just like renaming a variable. Another thing we can do is rename, you know, a whole table. So let me show you that. So if I go down into um, T SQL 2012 and I look at the T1, and I, remember I had a store procedure here. That store procedure was select from T1. So if I right click and I modify it, you can see that it's referencing the T1 table here, right? So what I can do here is I can take that T1 table, and I can right click on it, and I can do something called a smart rename. And I can say, make the T1 table be table one, and click next. And it says, okay, we're gonna rename this thing, but we're also, there's a store procedure also using it. So when I click view script, you can see how it's renaming the table T1 to table one, but it's also altering this store procedure, and it's changing it um, to select star from table one also. So it not only figured out that it needed to rename the table, it also found the dependencies that were in, you know, referencing that table and made sure that they were all updated also. So that smart rename, it's super useful, very useful. Okay. In addition, something that SQL Prompt can do is it can do what we call um, a quick peek. So what does that quick peek mean? Well, if I hover over Oh, well, it's a bad, it's bad here because it's not a real thing. But if I hover over a table, it'll tell me the table name, and it'll, but it will also give me a hot link. And if I click that hot link, it'll show me the schema inside of the script window. So I don't have to, like, go find that in Object Explorer. I can just, like, quickly peek at the schema here in the table, and it will tell me what's going on there. And it will do the same thing with the stored procedure. So if I click here and I say, go ahead and modify this, and I look at the table, all right. So right now I'm in this store procedure, human resources dot update employee login. And I, just, you know, use your imagination with me for a second. Imagine that this is like, there was a lot here, right? And I don't want to, I don't want it all in one procedure. So what I do is I click here and I can um, just refactor this to a separate, um, to a separate procedure, and the way I do that is Control B E, so that's encapsulate as new store procedure. So if I click Control B E, I can say, "What do you want this to be?" I can just say, 
you know, Ike's new proc or something. You know, that's a terrible name, but you get the idea. I click Next. I click View Script. Um, and now that's Ike's new proc. But what it did to the old window is it called Ike's new proc in the old window, and it passed in all the parameters to the new procedure, right? So now I've got two procedures here. And it, and it saw the dependencies, and it passed those dependencies in as parameters, just like you'd expect Visual Studio to do. Now, in addition to that, let's go ahead and create this one. And I create it, right? And let's see if it worked. It did. And let's go ahead and edit this one, and I execute that. And it goes, it goes ahead, and it, it works, right? Now what I can do is if I right-click on Ike's new proc, I can script. Look at this. This is cool, right? I see a procedure called in here. I don't know what it does. I can right click and I can say script object as alter or F12. Do you remember in Visual Studio when I want to like go to definition? That's also F12. So you can see that SQL Prompt is using a lot of the keystrokes that we use in other languages here so that the developers who are comfortable in Visual Studio can operate here. So if I hit F12 or a script object as alter, it brings up a new window. You know, sometimes this might not work because it's brand new. Let's try doing it on this log error. Right click, script object is alter, and there it is in the new. Yeah, it's just the um, cache hadn't been refreshed yet. But you can see how cool that is, that it just allows me to navigate to other places in the code really, really easily. Like, here's another one. And the other thing that it does is I can do F12, but I can also do, like, the peak definition that I did with the table before. And I can just like click it, and I can just glance at what that procedure is doing down here. If I want to see, you know, maybe I don't need to go into it. I just want like a quick peek at what that procedure is doing, and that allows me to do that. Um, okay. In addition, let's say that I've written a bunch of code. So I've got a bunch of windows open here. Let me just close. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna like do insert here into, okay. And then I'm going to do control KY and notice that it uppercases the keyword. So there's really no reason to use your shift key when you're writing code anymore because control KY will correct casing for you. But look at this. A lot of people don't like uppercase here for their data types. They like uppercase for the DDL. They like uppercase for DML keywords. But for data types, they like lowercase. So what you can do is in SQL prompt options, you can say, um, let's see, where is it? It's like right in front of me, case. And then you can say, for data types, lowercase the data types, and click OK. Now when I control KY, it makes the data types lowercase and keeps everything else uppercase automatically. So that's pretty useful too. OK. Let's go back to one of these long store procedures that I had before, so like this one. Let's modify this one. OK, this is a long store procedure. And you can see there are a lot of statements here. Now, one, you guys know, at least I'm sure you know that, or I'm pretty sure you know, that you guys have selected execution, where you have to like highlight, and then you hit F5, and then it will execute that thing for you, right? You guys have that, right? And that works fine. We can do here too, you know, execute. And then uh, I don't have parameters here, but you guys get the idea. How about this one? This one would work. Where's the at? Oh, that at language. Get rid of that at language for this just so I can show you this. So you highlight and then you execute. But sometimes, like, it's really long to do that. Like, you have to, like, scroll and mess it up. And selected execution is kind of a pain. In SQL prompt, you can just have your cursor anywhere on the statement. And rather than hitting F5, you hit Shift F5, and it executes just the statement under your cursor. So Shift F5, it executes the entire statement under your cursor. So that feature of selected execution, where you don't have to highlight everything first, will save you a lot of time. You'll get addicted to that feature. So again, it's Shift F5 to do that. What else? Um, the other thing you can do is in this procedure, you're seeing like a bunch of statements. It's actually not, it's considered bad practice to not have semicolons. And look at these begin ends look ugly too. 
So first I'm gonna do control K Y and get the begins and ends working and nested correctly. That looks much better, right? Second, I don't have any semicolons to indicate an end of line everywhere. I have some, but maybe I'd, oh, oh yeah, it looks like control K Y added the semicolons. If I just wanted the semicolons, it's control B C and control B C will add semicolons to every line that's executable. So maybe not the ifs, but definitely um, inside the begin ends and the ends, right, we'll get um, semicolons. That's really useful. Um, another thing you get in SQL prompt that doesn't come default by SSMS is if I highlight begin, I don't know if you can tell this on your screen, but that end automatically highlighted for me. So if I click end here or begin here, the end, same on the other direction too, I click end here, the matching begin highlighted for me. Um, so it does begin end highlighting. I kind of wish it did if else highlighting. It doesn't do that right now, but I think that would be super cool too. Um, okay. I think I think that's the main, those are the main things that I kind of wanted to show you about SQL Prompt. SQL Prompt is a super powerful, so there are a lot of features here. Um, and I think I showed you most of the ones, remove square brackets can be useful. Like if you go to a table definition and you say, you know, right click, select top 1,000 rows, and they put square brackets everywhere, and we don't want to deal with those square brackets, you can just say, hey, remove, it's control B, control B, remove them all, and it gets rid of all the square brackets so we can begin editing and not have to like wrestle with those things. Yeah, you bet, Rob. Yeah, good. Yeah, you bet, Rob. All right. So that's remove square brackets. Um, uh, anyway, oh, find unused variables and parameters is good. Remember that SQL Server is late bound, which means you can add procedures without the underlying tables actually having been created. And those procedures will actually hurt you if they're ever executed in production and the objects underneath them aren't there. So you can find unused variables and parameters. You can also find invalid objects both those features will show you components of your database that are dead, that, that won't run. So that might be very useful to play with. Um, any other questions before we go on? I think it's just Alan, Ian, and me. Did we have people drop out? Um, oh, there's oh, still I people there. Oh, cool. Nice, nice. All right. So if we go back to our agenda, at SQL Compare and Data Compare, we've looked at SQL Prompt. So we're changing topics where before I was teaching you small little productivity tools that you could use to be better SQL developers.